At this time, please place all electronic devices to vibrate. All electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, all non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There's additional sitting upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Quiet in your chambers, please. Please close the doors. Everyone, please take a seat. Individuals in the balcony, please have a seat. <clears throat> All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty Adams. Present. Barron. Shh. Borelli. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Constantinides. Cornegie. Crowley. Combo, Deutsch, Drum, here, Espinal, here, 
Eugene. Ferreris Copeland. Garodnik. Here. Gentili. I'm here. Gibson. Greenfield. Gradenchik. Here. Johnson. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lanceman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Mealy. Menchaca. Presente. Mendez. Miller. Palma. Perkins. Here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Present. Vaca. Ballone. Williams. Here. Matteo. Van Bramer. Van Bramer. Thank you. Matteo. Borelli. Barron. Speaker Mark Favorito. Thank you. All quiet in the chambers. All rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Reverend Dr. Jacques Andre de Graff, the associate pastor of the Great Canaan Baptist Church, 132 West 116th Street in the village of Harlem. To some, you are the creator. To others, you are my higher power. But I come in the tradition of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on this afternoon. And we bow our heads and incline our ears and hearts to you just to say thank you. Thank you for this opportunity to serve in the great chamber of the greatest city in the world. We are reminded of the song that was sung by a young singer who said he's got the whole world in his hands. And on this day, as we face danger in Times Square, we are reminded of the dangers of being a democratic body in a mean and sin-sick world. We ask that, Father God, that you would consider the men and women who serve here, remember who they are and where they came from, and remind them of what they came to do. Well, Father God, we too want to salute and to recognize those whose career in this room are winding down. We appreciate their sacrifice and their service and their contributions. And while you're passing out blessings, Father God, we, we pause for one more request. And that is, in the tradition of this body, it has been more about deliberation and consideration. It has also been about setting an example, not just for New York, not just for the nation, but for the world that watches what we say and do in this room. And in that tradition, we have always been barrier breakers and precedent setters. And so we looked to Astoria at a time for leadership and saw an Itlo American from Astoria and then looked to Chelsea for a leadership and we saw a Irish American gay person for leadership. We looked to East Harlem and found a Latina, a voice and a vibrant leadership. And so now those who once sat in the back of the bus are looking for a coalition of courage that might join together to provide new leadership in 2018. 
But Father God, whatever you do and however you do it, we ask that you would bless this place with the sunshine of harmony and the melody of justice. Empower each person under the sound of my voice to remember whose they are and why they're here. We know that as they do these things, I am convinced and convicted that the best is yet to come. God bless you and may God bless America. Thank you, amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Quiet in the chambers, please. Quiet in the chambers. Shh. Motion to spread the invocation. Council Member Perkins. Council Member Perkins, if you don't mind. Um, All right. So be it. Yes. Council Member Perkins, thank you. Uh, Reverend DeGroff has been a leader and an activist against gun violence, working with 100 black men in an 1199 Hospital Workers Union. He's led historic delegation of African American clergy on the Israeli mission of bridge building and interfaith fellowship. He was honored by the State of Israel with its Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Award and he was the first uh, and was the first Christian clergyman to serve as the Dr. King's keynote speaker at the New York Synagogue. He spearheaded a clergy prayer vigil at the United Nations to protest the bloodshed in, in Darfur. And he was a featured speaker at the United Nations at its Commission on Violence Against Women. He was visited by Pope Benedict to attend the ecumenical prayer service during the papal visit, along with Christian and Orthodox leaders from across this country. We welcome him and we thank him for that thoughtful um, prayer this afternoon. Thank you, Pastor. And now, um, motion to spread the adoption of minutes. Councilmember Cabrera. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of October 31st, 2017 be adopted and printed. Messages and papers from the mayor. Preconsidered M562, submitting Ann Holford-Smith for appointment to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Rules, privileges, and elections. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Preconsidered M563, Alameda Sky Chapman for recommendation to the youth board. Rules, privileges, and elections. M564, recommending Sylvia DiPietro to the Board of Elections. Uh, rules, privileges, and elections. M565, submitting the certifications of the members of the City Council. Uh, received order, printed and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. Thank you. Give me one moment, please. So uh, good afternoon to everybody. And obviously, as we all heard and we discussed it at the ceremonial earlier today, this morning there was an explosion at the Port Authority bus terminal. And on behalf of the entire council, I want to thank our first responders for acting so quickly and keeping our city safe as they do each and every day. We are deeply grateful for their commitment and the professionalism and sure that lives were saved thanks to their um, quick action. We're also joined today by the Coro PB Youth Fellows. We welcome all of you to City Hall and we thank you all for the support and participatory budgeting process. Are they sitting up in the balcony? Where are they at? All right, welcome to the chamber. <laughs> I also want to take a moment to just remember a couple of legendary New Yorkers that we lost this week, Maurice, Mickey, Carroll, and James Hanley. Uh, Mickey was not only a renowned figure in New York politics and journalism, but a mentor to many who um, roam here in City Hall. James was a fearless leader, an extraordinary public servant, who proudly represented the hard-working laborers of our great city, and just uh, taking a moment to just remember them. Thank you. And so we're going to jump right into our docket for the day. Uh, the council will begin by voting on a number of land use items. Introduction 1533A, sponsored by Council Member Margaret Chen, would empower elected officials and their constituents with tools they need to advocate for zoning, 
and land use policies in neighborhoods that are currently and were formerly designated urban renewal areas. Intro 1661A, sponsored by Council Member Rafael Espinal, would require the city to establish a website on nyc.gov by July 1st of 2018 to promote commercial and community-based agricultural uses in the city of New York. And finally, the council will also vote on construction of a new school in Council Member Menchaca's district. The Council will next vote on one finance item, Intro 1737, sponsored by Council Member Julissa Ferreras Copeland and Council Member James Vaca, that would establish the Morris Park Business Improvement District in the Bronx. Uh, for staff, I want to thank Latanya McKinney, Eric Bernstein, Rebecca Chason, and Aliyah Ali. Next, the Council is going to vote on Intro 270, sponsored by Council Member Anabel Palma, which would permanently change the name of two thoroughfares in the borough of the Bronx to East 177th Street and amends in the New York City map accordingly. Staff, I want to thank Jeffrey Baker, Chris Sartori, Patrick Mulvihill, Chima Obachair, Kenneth Grace, and Jen Wilcox. Moving on, we will vote on intro 1696A, sponsored by Council Member James Vaca, which would require the creation of a task force that provides recommendations <coughs> on how information on agency automated decision systems, otherwise known as algorithms, may be shared with the public. The task force would also provide recommendations on how agencies may address instances where people are harmed by agency automated decision systems. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Malaika Jabali, Patrick Mulvihill, and Sebastian Baki. Next, the council will vote on bills that require the reporting of information on the workforce of developers and contractors receiving funding from the city. Intro 1382B, sponsored by council member Robert Cornegie, would require certain contractors employed to work on city-funded construction projects to disclose to an agency designated by the mayor the zip code of their employee's primary address. This bill would also create record-keeping requirements for such contractors and would give the authority to enforce the provisions of this bill to the designated agency. Intro 752C, sponsored by public advocate Tish James, would require contractors employed to work on city-funded construction projects to disclose certain information regarding the demographics of employees working on those projects in addition to other administrative information. The staff, I want to thank Jeff Baker, Jen Wilcox, Terza Nazar, Rachel Cordero, Sylvester Yavana, Alex Polinoff, Nadia, Nadia Johnson, Casey Addison, Michael Kurtz, Nicole Abin, Eric Bernstein and Matt Carlin. Moving on, we will vote on intro 1651A, sponsored by Council Member Costa Constantinidis, which would require the Department of Citywide Administrative Services to provide an annual report on electricity and fossil fuel use in certain city-owned buildings, including identifying whether such buildings have been fitted with equipment for monitoring energy usage in near real time. Staff, I want to thank Jeffrey Baker, Samara Swanston, Nadia Johnson, and Jonathan Seltzer. Next, the Council will vote on Intro 1062A, sponsored by Council Member Margaret Chin, which would require that by January 1, 2019, the Administration for Children's Services would produce a study regarding its ability to provide access to language classes for foster care children whose parents are limited English proficient in order to ensure that children temporarily removed from their homes never lose the ability to communicate with their parents. I want to thank Jeffrey Baker, Andrea Vasquez, Tanya Cyrus, and Daniel Krupp. We will also vote on bills sponsored by Council Member Vinnie Gentili, Introduction 1618A, would require annual public outreach campaigns to educate the public on how to identify and submit complaints regarding different forms of government corruption, fraud, and waste. And Intro 1633A would require that whenever practicable, DOI must complete a vendor name check of a prospective vendor for a city contract 30 days prior to the commencement of the contract between the city agency and the vendor. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Josh Kingsley, and Sheila Johnson. Also, we will vote on intro 1764A, sponsored by Council Member Barry Grudenchik, which would increase the assessed value limitation for eligibility of J51 improvements to 32,000 per dwelling unit and would increase each year by the cost of living adjustment percentage. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, Sarah Gastelum, and Jen Wilcox. We'll also vote on intro 1241A, sponsored by Council Member Rafael Espinal, which would require diaper changing stations in assembly and mercantile occupancies for both male and female occupants. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, Sarah Gastelum, and Jen Wilcox. Council will also vote on a couple of NYPD reporting bills, intro 1611A, sponsored by Council Member Richie Torres, would require the NYPD to report on a quarterly basis the number of index crimes by borough where at least one person has been arrested and charged with the commission of the offense 
And introduction 1664A, sponsored by Cons Council Member Rory Lansman, uh, which would require the NYPD to report on a quarterly basis the number of theft of services arrests and fare evasion offenses returnable to the Transit Adjudication Bureau, disaggregated by age of the offender arrestee, subway station in which the offense took place, the Transit Bureau of the offense, and in the case of a criminal enforcement, whether the individual was issued a desk appearance ticket or whether the FST was processed through central booking. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Deepa Ambrakar, Casey Addison, and Steve Reister. Since the definitions of sexual orientation and gender in the city's human rights law were drafted, society has evolved its understanding of sexual orientation, gender, and gender identity. Therefore, the council will vote on intro 1186A, sponsored by council member Danny Drum, which would update the language in the human rights law to better capture the current understanding of sexual orientation and gender, recognizing that sexual orientation ranges along a continuum. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Zia Manuel Hailu, Deepa Ambercar, and Rachel Cordero. We will also be voting on intro 1678B, sponsored by council member Peter Ku, which would expand the definition of harassment to include threats based on a person's actual or perceived status in a protected class, including threats to report immigrant tenants to ICE. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Megan Chen, Jose Conde, Indiana Porta, Z. Emanuel Helu, Sarah Gastelum, and Jen Wilcox. And finally, in September, the city was stunned as a student was fatally stabbed and another critically wounded by a fellow student at a school in the Bronx. Early reports indicated that the student who allegedly committed the act was a victim of bullying. The council immediately acted by holding an oversight hearing to examine DOE's efforts to address bullying in city schools and introducing legislation to increase transparency about the DOE's policies. Intro 1538A, sponsored by Education Committee Chair Danny Drum, would require the Department of Education to post on its website information regarding how to report incidents of bullying, harassment, intimidation, or discrimination, including on each school's website, the contact information for the school's Dignity Act Coordinator. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Paul Senegal, Smita Deshmukh, Andrea Vasquez, and Terza Nasser. An intro 1757A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger, would require the DOE to report every six months on the number of material incidents of student to student bullying, harassment, intimidation, or discrimination in violation of Chancellor's Regulation A832, and to annually report on a support that DOE provides to school in an effort to prevent bullying incidents. I want to thank Jeff Baker, Smita Deshmukh, uh, Andrew Vasquez, and Terza Nazar. And that completes the highlights of today's docket. I look forward to proceeding with today's votes, and I especially look forward to seeing everyone tonight at the Council's holiday party. This will be a particularly bittersweet holiday season for me as I say goodbye to all of the New York City Council. Uh, serving as speaker these past four years and having the opportunity to work with all of you to help make the city a better, fairer place have been two of the most um, uh, having served as speaker for these past four years and having the opportunity to work with all of you to help make the city a better, fairer place had been two of the most rewarding experiences of my career. And I couldn't be more proud of all the great work that we've accomplished together. In addition to passing legislation and championing policies that have helped bring greater equality, justice, and fairness to all of our communities, We've successfully advocated for a budget year after year that's more inclusive of all New Yorkers and that addresses some of our city's most urgent needs. And we've consistently stood up for what's right because that is who we are as a city and who we are as a city council. So my thanks to each and every one of you. I'm excited to celebrate all of our accomplishments with all of you tonight. And before I close, just got word here that Councilmember Adrian Adams' uh, family welcomes a grandson today, Micah Ooh. Ryan. <laughs> so congratulations to you, Councilmember. And with that, I end communication from the speaker. Congratulations, Grandma. <laughs> uh, general orders, um, seeing none. Um, Report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil Rights, intro 1186A, amending the definitions of sexual orientation and gender. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Contracts, intro 752C, construction projects. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Education, intro 1486A, DOE reporting. Amended and laid over. Intro 1538A, and 
Intro 1757A, School Bullying Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Environmental Protection, Intro 1651A, Electricity and Fossil Fuel Usage. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Finance, Intro 1737, Morris Park Bid. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Intro 1783, Commercial Rent Tax. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 826 and Reso 1763 and LU 827 and Reso 1764, Tax Exemptions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on General Welfare, Intro 1062A, Foster Care Study. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1241A, Diaper Changing Accommodations. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1678B, Amending the Definition of Harassment. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1764A, J51, Benefit Eligibility. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, Intro 1533A, and Intro 1661A, Urban Renewal Plans and Agriculture Website. Amended and coupled on general orders. Preconsidered Reso 1761, Restore New York Communities Initiative. Coupled on general orders. LU 785 and Reso 1765, and LU 786 and Reso 1766, Harlem River Waterfront District. Approved with modifications and coupled on general mm -hmm. orders. LU 800 to LU 817 on page 7, various applications. Approve the modifications and refer to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 825 and Reso 1767, UDAP Queens. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 828 and Reso 1768 and preconsidered LU 829 and Reso 1769, property tax exemptions. Approved and laid, approved and laid over. Preconsidered LU 830 and Reso 1770, primary school, council district 38. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Oversight and Investigations, Intro 1618A, DOI Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1633A, City Vendor Name Checks. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, Intro 270, Renaming Two Thoroughfares in Public Places. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Public Safety, Intro 1611A and 1664A, Police Department Reports. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, preconsidered M562 and Res. 1771, approving the appointment of Ann Holford Smith, Landmarks Preservation Commission. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered M563 and Reso 1772, approving the recommendation of Alameda Sky Chapman Youth Board. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 1382B, Workforce Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Technology, Intro 1696A, Automated Decision Systems. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, Intro 1465A, Residual Fuel Oil and City Power Plants. A laid over. Rezo appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Uh, coupled on general orders, and I ask for a roll call vote on all coupled general order items. Beginning with Councilmember Ulrich. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, I ask for unanimous consent to vote on all land use items and all matters on the general order calendar. Yes. I vote aye, and I just want to give a special yes. shout out yep. to my grandmother, Rosemary, who's here with me uh, today. Oh, nice. God bless her. This and, uh, she was with me nine years ago on the day that uh, Councilmember Ferreris and I, uh, along with Kenny Mitchell, were sworn in, and. Uh, and she's still here, so I love you and thank you for being oh. here today. Thank you, Madam thank you. Public Advocate. Thank you. God bless you. Adams. I vote aye. Yay! <laughs> Barron. I vote aye. Borelli. Uh, aye on all except land use 817, uh, 752C, 1382B, and 1678. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Um, I urge my colleague uh, to vote for intro 1062A and 1533A. And I congratulate all my colleagues on their land use and legislation. I wanted to thank uh, Speaker Melissa Mark Riverito for her support on these legislation. Uh, thank Council Member Steve Levin, Chair of the General Welfare Committee and Council Member David Greenfield, the Chair of the Land Use Committee, for the, their leadership on these bills. And I also want to thank staff, uh, Ramon Martinez, Andrea Vasquez, Raju Mann, Julie Lubin, Jeff Campagna, my Land Use Director, Roxanne Early, and my Deputy Chief of Staff, Vincent Fang, for all their hard work on these two important legislation. And I vote aye on all. Thank, thank you. you. Cohen. Constantinides. 
Madam Public Advocate, may I be allowed to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I want to uh, ask my colleagues to support intro 1651A, which requires DCAS to provide annual report. Council member, excuse us. Okay. Could we have quiet in the chambers, please? Thank you. I'd like to ask my colleagues to support 1651A, which will require DCAS to provide an annual report on electricity and fossil fuel use in certain city buildings, including identifying whether such buildings have been fitted with equipment for monitoring energy use in near real time. This report requires assessments and improvements to building envelopes. It would also require DCAS in conjunction with other agencies to coordinate the installation of energy usage equipment and any software in city buildings that DCAS identifies as appropriate uh, for such installation. I want to thank uh, our speaker, Melissa Mar Favorito, uh, our committee counsel, Samara Swanston, Ed Atkin, uh, intern Ryan Moser for all their work on this bill, as well as uh, DCAS. And of course, my legislative director, Nick Wazowski. Thank you. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Carnegie. Madam Public Advocate, may I have permission to explain my vote? Yes. I, I encourage all of my colleagues to sign on to and vote for uh, intro 1382B, which will require contractors employed to work on city funded construction sites to report the demographic information of persons employed on the work site, including hourly rate of payment and zip code or primary residence, so we can be sure city funds are benefiting all New Yorkers. This information will add much needed accountability to the awarding of large contracts to developers who promise a diverse workforce and will ensure that we in government are making our commitment to create a fair and equitable city for all New Yorkers. I'd like to thank Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, Tirza Nasser, Asia Schomburg, Committee Council Sylvester Yavana, Poli Policy Analyst Michael Kurtz, Fiscal Policy Analyst Aliyah Ali, and my staff for all their work on this bill. And I would like to extend an extra special thanks to Bertha Lewis of the Black Institute and Hazel Dukes of the New York State NAACP, without whose advocacy this bill would not be as strong. Thank you. Thank you. Combo. Oh, I'm sorry, and I vote aye on all. <laughs> Thank you. Councilmember Cumbo. Aye on all. Thank you. Deutsch. Uh, no, in 1186, and aye in the rest. Okay. Drum. Aye on all. Espinal. Commissioner, to explain my vote? Yes. Yeah, I just really want to highlight the two bills that I'm passing today. One is intro 1661A, and this would require the city of New York to create a website, and it's nyc.gov. Uh, portal uh, dedicated to urban farming. So it will be an informational hub for commercial farmers and also community gardens to know uh, what are the rules and regulations the city has pl in place. And this also, I believe, will help spur urban gardening because it will incentivize people to go out there and start growing their fruits and vegetables. It's a, only a first step. I know there's a lot more work that needs to be done. I'm uh, dedicated and committed to doing that in, uh, in the new coming session. Uh, second is uh, a, a bill that will require diaper changing stations in all public restrooms. It's a bill I introduced with my colleague Dan Gorodnik uh, and something I'm very proud of after seeing a father actually changing his daughter's diaper on top of a public bathroom sink. So just imagine you have hundreds of people washing their hands after using the restroom, going to use that sink, but then you also have someone changing their child's diaper in that sink. So I hope this is a bill that also will benefit all of our young parents in the council. I know Laurie Cumbo just had a child and uh, uh, Antonio Reynoso is also having a child in the next few months and hopefully they can use this uh, for their family. So, uh, so um, thank me later uh, and all New Yorkers as well. I hope this benefits all parents across the city. So I vote aye on all. Thank you. Eugene. Uh, I want to vote on all the uh, land use call up and also I vote aye. Thank you. Garadnik. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye. Congratulations to all and particularly uh, uh, Council Member Espinal. I think that's a, that's a great, great thing for, for dads and all families. I vote aye. Thank you. Gentilly. Aye and Gibson. With my warmest congratulations to all of our colleagues, especially Council Member Espinal. Thank you so much. Uh, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Greenfield. Uh, special congratulations to Council Members Chin and Espinal on their outstanding land use legislation. I vote aye. Thank you. Gordenchik. Uh, yes, aye on all, with the exception of preconsidered Reso 1761. I abstain on that. Thank you. Johnson. Aye on all. Thank you. Kalos. Aye at all. King. Congratulations to everyone who's passing legislation today. 
I vote aye on all except for intro 1186A, I abstain. Thank you. Coup. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Kozlowitz. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Thank you. Levin. Aye on all. Thank you. Levine. Aye on all. Mizell. Mizell. Menchaca. Aye on all. Thank you. Miller. Uh, Madam Public Advocate, permission yes, to. Take it easy. Yeah. <laughs> you grant me all land use and call ups. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Watch that back. Palma. Mm -hmm. Mizell. Mizell. Yes. Yes. Perkins. I on all. Thank you. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, I want to acknowledge that Lacey Tauber, my legislative director, will be leaving the council today as her last day, and she will be joining the dark side uh, and HPD. <laughs> uh, a reference uh, next weekend, Star Wars uh, will be coming out. You guys should all go watch it. Um, Lacey Tauber dons the same issues as the great Lawrence Taylor of the New York football giants, and they have many things in common, these two. Uh, they aggressively pursue their goals, in this case, passing laws for Lacey Tauber, no matter who is in front of them. While she may be deterred at times, trust me, she persists. And I want to thank her for everything she has done to enhance my office and continue to help me pass legislation in this time. She has uh, been a, a great employee and staff member, and now um, that she will be leaving me, um, I want to acknowledge the great friend that she also has been in my office. I am proud that... Uh, Lacey Tauber has been in my office for the last four years and has helped me achieve my goals and the many accomplishments that I have. I'm very proud of her and wish her the best at HPD. Um, they have a superstar with them now. Uh, so thank you again, Lacey, for everything you've done for me. And I want to thank uh, Rafa Espinal for the changing tables that I will soon be using. Uh, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. <laughs> Richards. I uh, vote aye and thank you, Espinal, for looking out for us forgotten dads. Thank you. Oh. Donovan, too. The men who get it. <laughs> Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Aye on all. Congratulations to Lacey Tauber. Lacey, we are all going to miss you. It's, uh, it's one of those things where I'm happy for you and very sad for me. Um, and I want to especially thank uh, Councilmember Chin for carrying legislation that will help in all of our districts when it comes to land use decision making. It was an incredibly important bill and I know it will be important for the Upper West Side. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye on all. Thank you. Torres. Aye on all except land use item 817. Traeger. Uh, permission to expand my vote? Yes. Uh, public advocate, I'd like to uh, speak about uh, my bill that, that we're voting on today, intro 757, 1757. We have seen, especially in recent months, how bullying leads to tragic consequences. Several New Yorkers have lost their lives because of incidents rooted in bullying. As a former teacher, I know firsthand the physical, emotional, and psychological impact that bullying can have on students. With the rise of social media, bullying has taken on new forms and it is likelier than ever to spill out of the school campus and into the home lives of students. My bill will help us learn how bullying begins, where bullying persists, and whether or not schools have enough resources and are utilizing them properly. My bill also examines if schools are effectively informing parents and guardians of bullying incidents involving their children, and will also make sure parents and guardians are involved in the process every step of the way. I'd like to thank Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito, Education Chair Danny Drum, the Education Committee, uh, great staff, uh, Smita Deshmukh, Rob Newman, my Chief of Staff, Anna Scaife, 
my, my policy director, Vanessa Ogle, and all of my colleagues who have expressed support on this important issue, and I ask you all to please vote yes. And I vote aye and all. Thank you. Thank you. Vaca. I'd like to explain my vote. Yes, sir. Um, I want to thank the council for voting for 1696, my bill about algorithms, and I want to thank especially the members of the technology committee, which I chair, and my staff, Zach Hecht, and all the members of the council staff. We are increasingly governed by technology, and the data that goes into algorithms that makes decisions for you and I is not at all transparent, at this point and not at all accountable to our oversight here at the Council. My legislation creates a mayoral task force that must report during the next Council on what they propose to do agency by agency to make that information more available, to make it transparent, and how we can oversee the use of data that goes into algorithms and how people who dispute the findings can have a recourse to take action and appeal should there be a government decision that they don't agree with. We're the first city in this country to enact legislation like this because it's kind of wonky, it's kind of complex, but it's something that we have to put our arms around and we have to do it soon. The public will demand nothing less than that in the days ahead. So this is groundbreaking legislation. New York City leads the way once again. I'm proud of all the work that went into this, and I hope that the next council will put on their oversight hat and make sure that agency by agency is held accountable, makes the reports that are needed, and that we have a comprehensive approach to data, algorithms, and all that goes with it. Thank you. Thank you. Williams. <laughs> Matteo. Um, no on 752, 1382, 1678. Aye and the rest. Thank you. Van Bramer. Aye or no. Speaker Mark Viverito. I want to thank all of you for voting for 752. We'll go a long way making sure that our city constructed, uh, city funded construction industry is both diverse and represents the best developers and contracts in this, contractors in the city of New York. And I thank all of you for your support. And are all the fellows up in the balcony women? No? One guy? Where the, where the gentleman at? There you go, one gentleman. Two, very good. Very good. Proud of you. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 752C, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 301382B, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 1678B, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions, and Intro 1186A, which was adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, one negative, and one abstention, and Resolution 1761, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention. And that's it for the agenda. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are, have been referred to the committee as indicated on the agenda. Thank you. We have no resolutions today. We'll go immediately to general discussion, beginning with Council Member Gridenchik. Oh, my goodness. Happy holiday. <laughs> uh, Council Member Williams will not waive his right to speak. <laughs> you are correct, Madam and Public Advocate. Shh. Quiet in the chambers. Uh, I will be brief, though. Obviously, I uh, want to um, continue to send my prayers for those, for anyone who may have been here today, and thank the um, uh, armed men and women for their response today. Uh, I do want to talk about two things. Uh, the speaker had uh, a bill that we passed dealing with... Shh. 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 Council dealing Member with Williams has the floor. Please be quiet. Dealing with concealed carry and licenses. Uh, we do know <coughs> excuse me, that the concealed carry has uh, passed at least uh, one house, uh, which is extremely dangerous. Uh, as we've known, the Congress has been unable to pass legislation after a tax, and we see now that they can very well pass legislation when it comes uh, to guns, as long as they're making this 
country more dangerous. And uh, it just seems unwieldy that they won't even look at what's happening here in New York City. We are now the safest city, big city in the country. We uh, have a lot way, long way to go, but we're, we've moved so far, and to not look at what's happened here and try to make us uh, less safe is just a crazy thing, and I hope we continue to push back. I thank the Congress people uh, who have been supporting pushing back, and hopefully this body will continue to speak louder. Uh, I do want to just say uh, I was moved when the conviction and sentencing of, of Walter Scott, uh, uh, the officer that killed him, uh, not it is not enough that we actually see uh, officers being held accountable, and it's, it actually made me a little cherry because I, I speak about Black Lives Matter, but very often uh, you see on the news that it doesn't. And this was one time uh, that doesn't happen often enough. We saw someone being held accountable, uh, and I hope that is something that reverberates across the, the country. It will go a long way uh, into moving in a direction we want to continue moving. Last but not least, I want to thank Councilmember King for bringing us all together on uh, the steps today. And we should all be pushing against uh, what will soon be Firefighter Cassano for the words that he, uh, the words of hate that he's been known to tweet um, from time to time, repeatedly against Jews, against blacks. I kept thinking that if he was one of the responders today and he had to make a split set decision and he saw a yarmulke and he saw a Star of David or he saw a black skin, uh, what decision would that be? So I hope us as a body continue to push back on this administration not to have him hired. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilmember King. <clears throat> I rise and I'll be short. I just want to say thank you to everyone um, who came out this morning um, to denounce what FDNY has done by hiring someone who stands against everything that we fight for and what we've advocated against since the last four years in this council. So it is a slap in the face to the great work that this council has done for one of our agencies in FDNY to think it's okay to hire the poster child that, that represents bigotry and hatred. So we'll be calling on the mayor and everyone else, uh, and all of you receive letters from me. We're asking you to make sure that we get that letter signed, that we can get it to the commissioner and the mayor, urging them to remove this individual from ever serving New Yorkers since he can't seem to figure out how to show love or find love in this out for New Yorkers. And again, it's been a real honor and a pleasure working with everyone this legislative season. Thank you and happy holidays again. Thank you. And lastly, Council Member Greenfield. Thank Black. you very much. I just wanted to take uh, just a minute to recognize that my council, Elena Secheva, is uh, this is her last stated meeting, and she will also be joining HPD as the Deputy Chief of Staff. She's done fantastic work in my office for the last couple of years, especially around MIH, CQA, and all of the land use issues and legislative issues in my office. I wanted to thank her for her work and recognize her outstanding contribution to the City of New York and uh, to wish her well at HPD, where I'm sure she'll continue to be an outstanding public servant. Thank you very much, and I uh, wish everybody a happy Hanukkah this week. Councilmember Traeger. Thank you, public advocate. I, colleagues, I please bring to your attention a bill that I'm introducing today in the council, intro 1790. It's no secret that our PTAs are not as equitable as they should be, and we must do, make sure that uh, all of our students have equal opportunities across the board. Your zip code should not determine your number of opportunities. My bill will offer much needed transparency over our parent associations and parent teacher associations. My bill would require the DOE to report information annually regarding PAs and PTAs, including the number of parents registered and attending, the frequency of meetings, and the annual uh, income of the PTAs, noting, uh, noting fundraising activities and the annual expenditures. There is no secret that in certain neighborhoods in New York City, there is greater capacity to raise a lot more resources than other areas in New York City. And I want to make sure that our students, regardless of where you live, what zip code you're in, that you're receiving uh, a level playing field. So my bill would offer more transparency uh, with regards to PAs and PTA processes and help even the playing field for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. And without objection, we reopen the vote for Council Member Crawley. How do you vote? Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I vote aye on all calendar orders and all uh, land use items. Thank, Thank you. A revised um, tally, all items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 47 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 752C, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 1382B, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 
78B, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, two negative and zero abstentions, and intro 1186A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, one negative and zero and one abstention, and resolution 761, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative and one abstentions. And now to close the speaker, Melissa Margarito. No, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. To all my colleagues, I hope to see you at the holiday party and uh, following in Councilmember Greenfield's footsteps. Happy Hanukkah to all. So thank you. Happy Hanukkah to all. We now close.